This episode we're cutting holes for the fans and the windows. <laughs> All right, on to holes, hole diggers. Let's go down. I was super nervous cutting the holes in the roof, but when I was watching other YouTube videos online, there was this dude, he's like a mountain biker, but he had friends help him build his van out and they had found these 3D printouts that sit perfectly on Ram Promaster roofs to then cut out a van and mount the fans to them. And so I ordered two of those to mark it out because this is my cutting area. And then hopefully this thing just sets nicely right down in there. Cool, let's do it. I'm being taped taping. <laughs> All right, now it's time to mark it. Sniff it, get a little buzz. Mark it. Once I actually laid the templates out and taped everything up, I quickly realized. <laughs> right here you can see it fits in the grooves fine, but then the grooves reverse. So this thread pattern, it's not a thread, this groove pattern doesn't work here, which farting sucks. So now I'm just gonna have to offset it and then fill these gaps in with uh, extra goons. All right, so I'm not gonna put it back here because I need at least 80 inches between each fan for my solar panels because they're 39 inches wide. And if I put it back here, I end up with like 75 inches. Before we started cutting the holes, we made sure that I had the right amount of distance between each fan for my solar panels. So I got the dimensions of those prior to cutting the holes in the fan. Nope, prior to cutting the holes in the ceiling. I'm so nervous. Why? Because I'm about to put a giant hole in the roof. And I am not, like I shouldn't be doing this. I am not the guy. And there's probably a storm coming. Uh, yeah, I'll need the ladder to get down. <laughs> Be out. So I uh, put some diapers on the van to catch any debris coming down, and I just guessed where <laughs> I thought it might come down. So um, those aren't gonna do anything, but they're there. Cool. Uh, so I'm impatient, and I usually don't put pilot holes. If you take a pilot hole, you don't have to nearly push yourself through the ceiling trying to get the huge bit through. <sighs> okay, got it. <laughs> that was a dingus mistake. That was amateur dingus uh -oh. hour. Uh, I had a jigsaw from my grandfather. It was some piece of crap skill saw. So I went to Lowe's, grabbed a metal cutting bit with, with a it's lot of teeth. Now. I bought the wrong brand bit. So it never fit in the skill jigsaw that I had. It kept busting out. So a little word to the wise, buy the right brand of bit so it fits your jigsaw. All right, here we go. The other way you could do it was with a grinder, but I've seen people try that and have issues with it. I don't know, it was a lot of vibration up there. And then there's like no weight to it. So it's just the whole roof is and then it finally falls out. Hey, it worked. Stick your head in there. Hi. Once you cut your holes, make sure to sand down your edges with a some type of sanding device. I used a grinder with a sand bit on it and just soft out the edges so there's no jagged metal bits that you can snag yourself on and bleed. Someone's gonna watch your channel and tell you that you're an idiot. Oh, there, people are gonna tell me I'm an idiot, like, <laughs> time and time again. Wear safety glasses. If you wear glasses, that's, you're already in the right direction. So, 
Four eyes are better than no, none. <laughs> I'm gonna cover up them raw. And then once you have those sanded down, coat those suckers up with some flex seal or some type of coating so that those edges that are now exposed don't rust. It's just a sealant that is uh, polyurethane based. And I'm gonna bead this around the cutout and then stick it on. That's not beating. I know, whatever. And we're in. You can bead sealant onto the 3D printouts or however you're gonna press it down. I lined it and used way too much sealant. It just bubbled out and I had to cut all the excess off because it's like black and gets everywhere. Uh, just don't use too much. I overdid it. A little goes a long way. Another little thing to point out is butyl tape. I would suggest ordering the putty type butyl tape to seal the brackets to the 3D printouts on the van and then you can drill through that stuff to seal it to the body of the van. It mushes down, it gets a tighter seal to things and then you can cut the excess off of that. It just got like blackout and I am nowhere close to getting this done. I'm about to get fucked. All right, so when I started to lay the butyl tape down, a gnarly storm came whipping in really quick and I should have been paying attention to my phone for the radar, but I wasn't because I don't tend to pre-plan much. And I got stuck in a storm with holes in the van. So that kind of put me in a pickle. We were able to trash bag it up, but all we have holding it down is just the scrap pieces of wood. And I'm hoping that it sits and dries somehow. I don't know, and it doesn't leak in. Well, it's holding up for now. We'll see tomorrow morning what it looks like. And then I can pick up all this shit. Hopefully, doesn't get all rusty. I don't know. I don't know. I was able to get everything sealed down and mounted properly and I let it all sit for a week to see how it was riding and then the following week when it was like a hundred degrees out and I was on the roof of the van in my cool new overalls. I was pretty proud of those overalls. I still am. I still have those overalls and they're one of the best investments I've purchased because I think I ruined a pair of shoes, two pairs of shoes and two pairs of pants, a pair of shorts, and a shirt until I got those overalls. And now I kick ass in overalls like a superhero. So to the, the lid to my flex seal must not have closed. Nice solid piece of rubber. I'm gonna now coat it. So a week later and I found that I was getting a, a minor leak after it had rained while I was driving one time. So I went back, I cleaned up all my edges and stuff, made it look a little better than it was and then I took that flex seal again and I sealed everything up. I even went over the screws to make sure there was no more leaks and um, I made sure to tape that off so it was a nice clean line. We'll have no leaks from here on out. And that was it. I still have no leaks they've held up uh, almost a year later uh, they look a little brown they're not as white as they used to be uh, I think we got a shot of that up there cue the shot oh uh, all right moving on to the windows so the windows I knew I would need help seeing how well the fans went I wanted to make sure we got the proper measurements and I had help holding everything into place and double checking everything. So Kyle came over and helped me out and Kyle is my buddy, business partner, climbing friend, uh, engineer who actually uses a tape measure. We got uh, some dog fights going on, putting bets. No bets, that makes it illegal. <laughs> so we're gonna put the side windows in today always at least we're gonna try and we're gonna measure out about midway on this thing and make sure that we have a level so that when we put it in it's not gonna obstruct 
my mattress, which is six inches thick, along with like the cabinetry above. We kind of want to get it at that happy medium. So he came over and uh, he showed me what it's like to actually measure something and then measure it again and then triple check it. Because once we did that, we were able to actually get things to fit first try. What? That's bonkers. First try? Are you kidding? 54 and a half. What the fudge is with all these halves? It's a dodge. <sighs> 54 and a half. Is that right? Six, eight, three minus four, one, eighteen. In order to make sure that you get the right spot and a level spot for the back windows, you need to make a template. And so you make the template by tracing the mounting bracket to the window itself or the inner uh, ring of the window because that's where it's going to sit. You take that template and you stick it on there with some tape. You measure the distances top to bottom, side to side, make sure it's level. And then you put two holes through it. Then you take that cardboard where the two holes were and literally like go from the inside and flip around to the back so that it's matched up, poke through the holes and then just draw an outline on there and it should match right up. That tutorial online for motion windows will show you exactly what I'm talking about if we don't do a good job with it. I think I did this right. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go. We're taking the cutouts that I made from the inside that we've measured and had nice and level and just basically reversing it and putting it out here so that, so that we can match it up. Just a hair. Just easy to go up. Yeah, I think I moved it. And then once we tape it in, we'll mark it out and get the hacksaw ridge in. We got the, the windows in pretty easily, actually, once we cut everything out. Like a glove. Dang. That never happens for me. Cool. <laughs> Hot damn. Yeah. Now don't let it fall out and break on the ground. Yeah. That feels good. <laughs> That's what happens when you measure three times. Yeah. <laughs> it out or something. The screws are not long. So we're gonna put butyl on the window. Why don't you leave this side on? It doesn't let you get the edge. You know don't pull it. It's like a, it'll thin out. We wet the edges down so that when we put it on there, this isn't just going to instantly stick. We can kind of shift it around and make sure it's level. And then I just drop. Dude, we're spot on. Yeah? Yeah. Four, three, six. We had to run to Lowe's at 9.30, I think they close at 10, to grab a bit and then Give it. sink them in. Give it. So we're back, putting them in. We've got our number two square head, and we're going to put everything in to make sure we're set, and then we'll go back through and tighten everything up. If you go check out Motion Windows tutorial, you should be able to see how they advise you to install them. And during the video, they say like, cut this template out, it'll give you a little more backing when you mount it to the sidewall of the van. I skipped that. I was like, meh, I don't really want to do that. There seems to be some dents, which you kind of can see on camera, kind of can't. You can see at least the shimmer of it. And uh, we're thinking it's like pressure points from the screws 
and not having a backing on it. So we did that and now I kind of permanently have these little ripples, uh, pressure marks by the windows. And so we're gonna take those wood cutouts I made a while back that we didn't use and throw them in. So we put the backer on after a couple days and then re-tightened everything down. Looking at it now, I should have made the windows a little higher above the bed, not flush to the bed, because now my feet are like right at it, my head is right at it. It would have been nice to have a little bit more height to them. It's been about 24 hours to let that uh, butyl tape sit, and so we're gonna go cut off the excess. You can see there's all this excess. It looks like shit. You don't want that on there. So I'm just gonna like score around the edges and then peel it off. Pros did it. It's a nice window. If only that dent was a little higher. <laughs> and there you have it. Uh, I had windows. Those were the first holes I cut in the van, and I think I cut like five more. And then the, yeah, way more. You cut a lot of holes in the van. After you do the first one, that band aid's ripped off. It gets a little bit easier. Come here. See? And then you can have, you know, your dogs do this and greet people, they can serve food. Uh, if you wanna do like a, a food truck, they can enjoy the weather outside. Yes. Are you coming back? This episode. <laughs> this episode. <laughs> <laughs>